Hello and welcome to Power Rankings. I'm your host, Jessica Kinney, and I'm here to give you the rundown on how the power shifts from week to week on Game of Thrones. This week's episode was named High Sparrow for the current High Septon of the Faith of the Seven. His real name is unknown as High Septons abandoned their names once elected to office. Speaking of names being unknown, I want to give a shout out to Arya Stark for her work on becoming one of the nameless, faceless men. She's shedding her identity and getting ready for the journey to come. Except the idea of giving up Needle was a little too much for her. Does that mean she's not ready? Probably not. She's Arya Stark and she's awesome. Someone who is definitely ready for so much overdue training is my honorable mention this week, Podrick Payne. He has never had much power of his own, but with Brienne now teaching him to fight, I have no doubt he'll be someone to watch. I would always be watching my back if I were number five this week, Sansa Stark. She is still a serious asset to the North, has the right last name, is now at Moat Kalen, and promised to Ramsay Bolton. Though she does have to look her future father-in-law, Roos, in the eyes, knowing that he was responsible for murdering her brother and mother. So she has a long road ahead of her, but if she's learned anything from Peter Baelish, it should be that you have to suck up to the right people if you want your revenge. Revenge is the middle name of number four this week, Cersei Lannister. She might be losing control of her youngest son, Tommen, but she has more than one trick up her sleeve, as we have learned from her previous antics. We know she's in communication with Littlefinger, has some weird experimenting going on with Kyburn, and is now befriending the High Sparrow. I'm assuming to gain the love of the people of King's Landing, which presently belongs to Marjorie. Her influence runs deep, and she is still the King's mother, but her power is fading, and that could make or break her. The same is true with Roose Bolton, who happens to be number three this week. He is plotting against anyone and everyone he can. He trusts no one, and that's probably because he's extremely untrustworthy himself. But with his union to the Starks and the help of Peter Baelish and the Eyrie, his family could have more power than ever before. Although, I don't know why anyone would do dealings with someone whose sigil was a flayed man in the first place, but that's just me. So, now for the runner-up and an amazingly manipulative woman, Marjorie Tyrell. Her power is just beginning to grow. She's finally the queen again, and it suits her. The people of King's Landing love her. Tommen is smitten with her, and she's already working hard to get rid of Cersei. I love the passive-aggressive conversations between the two of them because they're both so good at being political with each other. Uh, Marjorie has the title, the money, the influence she needs to be at the top. Not of this week's power rankings, but, you know. And showing off his influence this week at number one is Jon Snow. He showed his leadership and strength when he beheaded Jano Slint, which I know I was happy that that coward was gone, so the men of Castle Black probably are too. So it was a great way for Jon to show off his resolve and set the precedent for his leadership as Lord Commander. It's even possible he can become a Stark if he fights for Stannis. I think his power is only beginning and that he will stay in the rankings for the rest of the season until they kill everyone. <laughs> Just kidding. Well, that's all for this week. Thanks again for watching, and don't forget to check back next week to see who's got the power. For more Behind the Throne power rankings, subscribe to thestream.tv.